At the beginning of the 20th century, those who practiced medicine were not the professionals we know today, as frontier doctors were little more than folk healers. Borrowing remedies from local Indians, they used a variety of natural substances to cure people's ailments. Using poultices, teas, and purgatives derived from native roots and berries, their so-called cures often did more harm than good. Lacking a scientific understanding of what made people ill, their greatest contribution was often a calming presence, as they provided psychological support to the afflicted people and their family in times of need. Those who called themselves doctors were not that much better. While some medicos sought formal education at schools back east or in Europe, many more earned their title by simply studying under a physician with an established reputation. With no nationally defined medical standards, almost anyone could gain the credentials necessary to call themselves doctor. As a result, there was little that distinguished medical quacks from educated professionals. Many of these so-called physicians relied upon a wide variety of exotic tonics and elixirs in attempts to alleviate their patients' pain. Collectively, they've become known to history as snake oil. In many cases, these painkillers were narcotic or opium-based liquids that made patients forget their ailments rather than actually cure them. Not only was morphine or laudanum frequently prescribed, but the bear company, makers of today's bear aspirin, advertised heroin as a curative, with understanding of its addictive qualities. Its name, a female hero, belied its dark side. Few of these early medicines were as well known as Lydia Pinkham's vegetable compound. Claiming to cure all varieties of women's ailments, it offered only vague hints of treatable symptoms and even vaguer suggestions of what actually went into the bottle. This would all soon change as so-called muckraker journalists exposed the ills of an emerging modern society. Medical quacks peddling their ersatz cures were among the first targets. By 1905, fraudulent remedies and their purveyors were exposed by those who sought higher standards for both medicines and medical doctors. With the emergence of the American Medical Association and the Texas State Medical Association, the frontier snake oil salesmen would soon disappear, replaced by modern professionals who use science and true medicine to heal their patients.